Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Naomi and today I want to make strength training a little bit easier and a little bit more efficient for you. So today we are going to combine two exercises into one side at a time. So we are going to be doing single leg deadlifts followed by single arm rows all on the same side before we go to the other side. It's a really effective way to move through a strength training set a little bit faster than you might if you did all of your single leg deadlifts right and then left and then single arm rows right and then left. So if you're somebody like me and you have a really busy schedule or you have kids and they complicate your life in the best ways but they also make it sometimes hard for you to move, this is for you because this is what I often do when I am looking to do exercises that require me to do both sides, right? In the case of like lunges or today, single leg deadlifts and single arm rows. Now, if you know how to do single leg deadlifts and single arm rows, you can skip the first seven or eight minutes because that's where, because I've recorded this for my online studio, that's where I recorded that for my students in my online studio so that they would have instructions, so that they would know what to do. So if you already know how to do that, just skip ahead to about eight minutes in and you will be good to go. But if you want the instructions and you want to do all of that with me and you want to get a good sense of how to move through this string set, then watch the entire thing and I will guide you through not only how to do the exercises together, but then I will do them with you. So whichever you choose, let's get moving. Let's get stronger together and I will see you on the other side. So the way that we're going to do this, our two exercises this month are single leg deadlifts and single arm rows. And so the way that that works is that you could and you are today going to do, and I'm just going to show you without weights, basically what it looks like, single leg deadlifts. And then when you're all done with those, single arm rows, <laughs> okay? So the way that it's going to work is that for your single leg deadlifts, you basically, and your single arm rows, you want to use the same heaviness of weight if that is possible for you while still challenging your legs. Because of course, usually what you can lift with your upper body, with your shoulders, is going to be less than what you can lift with your weights or with your legs, sorry. So all kinds of woo. So, so you want to find a weight that is good for your legs and challenges your upper body, but it's not too much for your upper body. Okay. Now, if that's not possible, you can have two sets of weights and simply use one for legs and one for your upper body. All right. So just keep that in mind that if there isn't one that gives you a good challenge for both, it's okay to use two. Now, the other thing that I want to say is that if you would like to do this against the wall, I highly encourage that. Why? It's a little bit tricky to see because I don't have a good wall to go against from the side. But using the wall allows you to hinge and take your hips back toward the wall so that you know the direction that you want to go. Your chest goes away from the wall and you have a little bit more support for your back leg when you are hinging and pushing back and lifting up, okay? So I recommend having that wall. Now again, what it looks like is this would be my foot against the wall and I'm pushing, pushing, pushing back through my heel and my hips go back as I reach down and I keep pushing as I lift back up. Now, you can certainly do this without a wall in the middle of the room, particularly if you are more familiar with single leg deadlifts and single arm rows. So you don't have to do it at the wall. I just think that it's, I love doing it at the wall because it gives me a lot more support. Um, so I will be doing one in the middle of the room so that you can see it, and I will certainly demo that way because you have better view, but I highly encourage using the wall especially if you're using a slightly heavier weight for your legs and you want that support and you also want the reminder of to keep, as I'm doing the rows, oh yeah, I've got to keep my body more parallel, closer to parallel. Because as we do single arm rows, the tendency is to lift up a lot, right? Because it's hard to stay here while you're pulling weight away from the floor. So using the wall also just gives you a little bit of a reminder of the wall is there to support me. My butt is going back toward the wall. My chest is going forward. It's just a really great tool of support. Okay. So let's get into the exercises so that you know what we're doing. I do have a kettlebell and a hand weight, a dumbbell here, so that you can see the two different ways that you can work with weights. I prefer the kettlebell because it means I don't have to go down as far and I like the handle of it, but you can do this with a dumbbell and I'm going to show you both. Okay. So with 
the dumbbell, which is more likely what you have. You're gonna start with the dumbbell on the inside of your left foot, and that's just how I'm demoing. So if you want to do this with me, you can. Again, this is me away from the wall so that you can see it better, but please do this at the wall if it makes more sense. So I'm gonna hinge, butt back, chest forward. I grab my weight, I lift. So I lift up so that my left leg is straight and my back knee is still slightly bent. And then I hinge and lower and lift. And then I repeat that over and over. Well, not over and over and over forever, but I repeat it between six and 10 times, okay? I recommend that you do more of the single leg deadlifts than the rows, but we'll get to that. So once you've done as many deadlifts as you're gonna do, then you lift the weight up, you're still in that hinge, and you row, elbow toward the sky, weight toward your ribs, okay? So my body shape from the deadlift doesn't change. I don't wanna angle up, because then this, <laughs> this doesn't work as well and it doesn't feel as good. Okay, so here, trying to keep my body more angled, and that's just gonna give me a lot easier of a trajectory to lift the weight away from the floor. So that is with my dumbbell. Now with the kettlebell, I'm gonna do the other side so that I'm not overtaxing my body, <laughs> all right? On one side versus the other. So I'm here, again, it's the same idea, I hinge, reach for the weight, my back knee is bent, front knee is slightly bent, and I lift, that's my single leg deadlift, and lower, and then once I've done as many of those as I'm gonna do, it's a row. And I can, and I do this sometimes, you can have your hand on your thigh, that's fine, okay? I'm gonna pause this for just a sec, so that when we start, we're starting on the minute, but that's, that's what we're doing, okay? Now, like I said, if you want to challenge your legs a little bit more and you want a slightly lighter weight for your upper body, make sure that you have that slightly lighter weight. This is where it might be useful just to have a second set with you so that if you just want to give your legs more and you don't want to stress out your upper body in the same way, that you have options, okay? It's also good to have options in general because you might get to the third set and say, whoa, this felt good in the first set, in the third set, it just feels like too much. So you could always scale back in heaviness. My preference is to scale back in reps, okay? So the rep range for your single leg deadlifts is between six and 10, okay? Rep range for your single arm rows, I'm gonna say it's between six and eight, right? So six is that threshold that you wanna try to meet every time, typically. But for the single arm rows, I would encourage you, particularly if you're using a weight that is more geared towards your legs, your rep range is gonna be lower for your upper body, okay? So that's what we're doing. And we're gonna move through it, you know, not like super quickly, but you are gonna do one side and then the other, and then you get to rest for about a minute. Now, if the speed at which I am going through these feels too quick for you, my suggestion is to just take a pause, all right, stop me, and see how much time you need to do between six and 10 of those single leg deadlifts and six and eight of the single arm rows, right? So if you were doing, for example, 10 single leg deadlifts and you're using the same weight and you're doing eight rows, you should be able to do that in under a minute, particularly if this is not new to you, okay? And then you can go right to the other side. But if that feels really rushed, then give yourself a minute and a half. Give yourself a little bit longer. So that just means that you're not gonna work with the same time that I am doing. It means that you can time yourself, okay? Or you can not use the timer at all, which I frequently do on my own, and I just do the reps that I'm gonna do, do the other side, and then I rest, and then I do it again, because we're gonna do this three times through, okay? So let's get right into it. We're gonna start with those single leg deadlifts. To help, I'm gonna suggest that we all start on right side, okay? So I'm gonna start my timer again. Because you're starting on the right side, weight goes to the inside of your right leg, left foot comes to the wall, knee slightly bent, and you can start any time, okay? Aiming for between six and 10. Remember, as you hinge, your butt goes back toward the wall. I'm even reaching with my hand back toward the wall, my right hand, because it's just like, oh yeah, that's where it is. That's where I'm going. Okay. Whew. 
And if you see me doing this really quickly, this is quick. I'm also not using the heaviest weight that I would ever use for single leg deadlifts. I'm going into my rows now. And that's mostly because I want to be able to use the same weight for my upper and lower body. And I'm going to say that's good. I wasn't counting because of course I wasn't. Okay. But I'm going to set it for my second side so I can start on the next minute. Again, if that feels too soon for you, just pause. All right. But I'm going to go ahead and start second side now with my deadlifts. Okay, single leg deadlifts. Again, can you see my left hand is moving against the wall? So I'm reaching back with my left hand to remind me, oh yeah, that's where I want to go. Chest is going forward. My hips are going back. Ooh. And then I'm going to move on to my rows. So you can have your hand on your thigh if that helps. And you might notice that I'm exhaling when I pull up. That's enough for me. And now we get to rest. We get to rest for a little more than a minute. That's me, again. What I want to say is that in this minute while you're resting, if you find that you need more time, like your body is just not ready, okay? Then give yourself more time, all right? Give yourself a lot more time. It's okay to take a lot more rest than you think you might need because the truth is, is that it's in those spaces of rest when you give yourself that time to rest that your body recovers enough to go and lift again. If you don't give yourself enough recovery time, when you go to lift again and it feels really hard, right, that's when you sort of go like, oh, that was too much, or my body feels really tired. I'm going to grab my heavier kettlebell so that you can see what it would look like to switch. And I'm going to do this in the middle of the room this time. Okay, I'm switching which leg is forward. We're going to start in about five seconds. Okay, and you can go ahead and start. And again, I'm only doing it in the middle of the room so that you can see the angle of my body as I hinge. So I'm taking my hips back. My front knee bends a little bit. Not a lot. My back knee bends considerably to help me get that hinge. Okay. And then once I've done that, I'm going to grab my other weight and row. And see how my body wants to lift up? I'm trying to keep it from lifting. I'm going to turn. It's facing that way so I could see my clock, but I want you to be able to see the row on this side. And we're going to call that good so that I can move on to the other side. Because <sighs> our, our next minute starts now. So I'm doing deadlifts first. And because the wall is nearby, I can actually reach to the wall with my right hand since my right leg is forward. And it just gives me a little bit of support if I need it. Then I'm going to set that weight down, swing my other one around, and do my rows. Chest stays forward, hips back. If I find that I'm inching up, I'm going to take my chest a little forward so that the path for lifting isn't so high. Right? That doesn't work quite so well. It's a much more straightforward path here. But anyway, now we get to rest. So now we get to rest. And we have, at this point, about 50 seconds. And you can probably hear I'm breathing hard. OK, I'm breathing hard because I'm working hard. Now, we are kind of moving through this really quickly. 
because you're doing one side and then the other, and we're trying to stay on the minute. And that's mostly just to keep it within the confines of a three minute set. Like I said before, we have about 25 seconds left, but like I said before, you might find that a minute is not enough, and that's okay. <laughs> that is fine. You might find that you may need a minute and a half. So you have, instead of a three minute set, you have a four and a half minute set, no big deal, right? But we are gonna start the last set now. I'm gonna set the heavier weight aside. I'm gonna go back to the wall because I like the wall. Left foot forward, right foot against the wall, and lift. And I usually try to alternate here, but I forgot this time. I was like, which leg was forward first last time? So I like to change which leg starts first. This time I didn't, so it goes. As you do this, your back knee might get out of the way. It might move out to the side, which looks a lot like Johnny Shirashasana, which is our pose of the month. And then when you've done as many of those as you're gonna do, it's your rows. Some people advocate for not having your hand on your thigh. So arm out to the side, because then you're not working quite as much. I'm gonna set that down. People will say, oh, you're not working as much if your hand is on your thigh. Okay, we'll talk about that on the second side. So second side, last minute starts now. So let's do this. It's just hard to talk while I'm doing this. Remember, your butt is going back toward the wall, chest is going forward. And then when you've done as many reps as you're gonna do, the weight comes back to the ground, arm bone integrates, and you row, trying to keep your torso parallel. Some people take their arm out to the side. You can have your hand on your thigh, you just don't wanna like put all of your weight in it. But it can be there to keep your body pointing more forward instead of rotating toward the arm that you're rowing. And that's it. We're done. <laughs> oh, thankfully I didn't knock over any of the pictures, but that's it. And that is thanks so much for joining me on the mat today. I hope that it was useful to see how you can combine two exercises together to move a little bit more smoothly through your strength training practice and to make the most of the time that you have. If you are a busy mom like I am, or if you just sometimes need to get moving a little bit more quickly and efficiently than you might already do. So if you enjoyed that and if you like strength sets and strength circuits that break things down and give you a little bit more direction and guidance, then you should join me and move because that's what all of my strength sets look like. I incorporate them into videos like that where we're only doing strength. I also do ones where we do a combo of a warm up and then a strength set and then we do a yoga inspired flow based on what we did in strength and what we did in the warm up. So that's pretty cool. And then I even do longer ones that are 30 minutes long. So it's really tailored to your needs. So go ahead and check out the description below and see if Move is a good fit for you for an online studio. You can also get a discount for 50% off your first two months if you use the coupon code that I provide. So whether or not you hang out with me here on YouTube or whether you join me in Move, I'm just really glad that you were here today. Thank you so much for getting on the mat with me and I will see you again soon.